Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. Today I'm going to be doing another foundation review and wear test for everybody. These brands just keep kicking it out, these brand new products, left, right and centre. I'm sorry, I have no control of when they do this. Anyway, you've had two back to back so far. I hope that's okay, I hope you're not getting bored of them. Do let me know if you are. Anyway, this should be the last one for a while anyway. This is the brand new Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Foundation. I'm really quite excited to try this. If you are interested in seeing how this applies to my skin and how it wears throughout the day, then please keep watching. Okay, so this is the brand new Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. That was a mouthful. So anyway, this includes 30 mils worth of product for the grand price of 36 pounds in the UK, 48 dollars in the US, and this comes in 30 different shades. I've gone for the shade 2N 1.5, which is beige. This gives a medium coverage straight away, but is buildable to full coverage, and it gives a luminous finish. This has got vitamin C in here, which is a really powerful antioxidant. This boosts the luminosity of the skin and can also make the skin clearer and feel more toned over time. This also has the ability to reduce the appearance of age spots over time as well. This has also got silver ear mushroom extract in there, which is an ingredient that is seriously nourishing and hydrating. This may give up to 15 hours worth of hydration with one application, and it has the ability to smooth out any fine lines and wrinkles over time. Now, the silver ear mushroom extract might be absolutely fantastic for anybody with a drier complexion or a combi dry skin but I'm not sure how this is going to cope with an oilier complexion, but again, with the wear test, we'll see how this copes with my oilier spots. This is a weightless formula and gives a second skin finish. This has got flexible polymers in here, which just melt into the skin. It's also got color true pigments in here, which resist oxidation, which if that is true, will be really refreshing because the foundations that I've been trialing out recently seriously have oxidized on my skin. So it'll be so refreshing if I found one finally that actually stays true to the pigment that it gives as soon as you apply it to the face. So really quite excited to try that. This is suitable for all skin types, but as I've mentioned before, the silver ear mushroom extract is really hydrating. So this is probably going to suit more of a normal to dry skin type. This is fragrance free, it's sulfate free, it's non-comedogenic, and as far as I can find out, I don't think this has an SPF in here, so you need to be applying your SPF before you apply this product. Let's get some on the skin. Okay, so I've already got my serums and my moisturizers on my face, and I've given those plenty of time to soak into my skin before I'm about to apply the foundation. As per usual, I'm not gonna wear any primer on my skin because this is a first impression and Primers react differently to different kinds of foundations, so I like to try it out first time without a primer at all. As per usual, I am gonna trial this foundation out all week and see which way it performs the best. And I will update you in the description box or in the comment section below in a highlighted comment. So keep your eye out for that because I definitely will update everybody. Now I've just been down and picked this particular foundation up. I was going to order it online because it's been available for the last five days online to order in the UK, but I thought, do you know what, I'm going to hold off and I'm going to get properly shade matched in store. So I went down this morning, got properly shade matched and I'm really, really pleased that I did because I emailed Laura Mercier last week and they said just go off whatever shade you are in the Flawless Fusion. And if I'd have done that, I wouldn't have actually got this shade. This is a completely different foundation and it sits on the skin completely differently. So you may find that you are a different shade. And the shade that I've been matched to today is a completely new shade that isn't even available in the Flawless Fusion. So I am really pleased that I waited. This is the 2N 1.5 in beige. I love the packaging in this. It is a glass bottle, so if you drop this, if you are a little bit of a butterfingers like me, it may smash if you have a hard floor. Not quite sure what I feel about that, but it will travel well because it has a pump and the lid is really secure on the top. So let me just show you what this actually looks like. Very, very similar to the Flawless Fusion packaging, only 
the actual glass bottle is clear rather than being slightly opaque. Okay, so let me just show you the consistency of the product. It's actually quite a thick liquid. If I tilt my hand, it's definitely not running all over the back of my hand. And hopefully this will mean it's going to be quite moisturizing and quite rich and beautiful on the skin. I'm going to apply half of this product to half of my face with my 103 Define Buffing Brush from Zoeva, which is my application tool of choice, as you know, if you're a regular to my channel. And I'm gonna apply the other side with a damp blending sponge. And the only reason I'm doing this is because, well, people have asked that I try both on my channel, so I like to please. So I'm gonna do that for you today. And also Laura Mercier has brought out a blending sponge to apply this particular product with. So I'm guessing if she's brought out a blending sponge to apply this with, then that's what she thinks is the best application method for this product. So we're going to try both and see which one is best. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go about applying it how I usually would, just dabbing it into the skin. I'm using very little product it does have a little bit of a scent to this, which again is slightly annoying. I don't have anything against perfumes in products. In fact, some perfumes I actually really like. This one has got more of a spa-like refreshing cucumber scent, a little bit like the YSL, but um, I just think it's unnecessary. You don't need it and I find that the more aggressive the perfume, the more aggravating it is on my skin. This is really, really pretty on my skin. Sitting really nicely, really is sinking in. Very, very nice. And it's a great shade match for me. I really, really like that. I think that's just evened everything out perfectly. It's got a little bit of shine in the mirror in front of me. I can see that this is my exact shade match. Because of the bright lights in front of me, this looks like it washes me out completely. And that is a little bit of glow on the skin, making it look a lot paler than it actually is. So please bear that in mind. I will show you what this looks like in natural lighting a little bit later on anyway, but this is quite glowy on the skin, but not too glowy. This doesn't look ultra dewy. It just looks really nice like that. Let's see how it applies with a sponge. A lot less coverage straight away, which we knew we were going to get. Mm, I don't like, I don't like this at all. I think it goes a little bit patchier on my skin using this method. I'm going through a lot more product than I would usually use, which is a waste of money for me. Now, I really don't like it. I don't like it. I think it doesn't give a medium coverage when you're putting it on with a sponge, which it does say that this foundation is medium to full coverage. It should give you a medium coverage as soon as you put it on, even if you're only putting it on quite sparingly. But I do feel like you're going to get less coverage if you're going to use a sponge. Now that might suit you, but at the moment for me, I would really like a medium coverage today. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit more with a brush. I think this looks absolutely stunning on my skin. It's really glowy, fresh. It's definitely a medium coverage. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look heavy. It hasn't accentuated my pores to the point where I'm thinking, mm, I need to powder this down. And yet it is quite a dewy foundation without being ultra, ultra glowy and looking a little bit sweaty on my skin, which some dewy foundations can do. This is the perfect amount of glow. 
So my pores around this area and this area still look exactly the same as they did before I applied the foundation. So it definitely hasn't accentuated those pores and made them much more noticeable than they were before, but they also haven't airbrushed those pores either. So if you do have large pores and you want to try this foundation out, you may need to use a primer if you want to make your pores look smaller. But I'm quite happy with my pores looking exactly the same as they would if I didn't have makeup on at all. So I think this is really beautiful, very, very fresh looking. I'm really happy with how it applied. I'm gonna go and put the rest of my makeup on and see how everything blends together and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the finished look for today. I wanted to do quite a natural look because I wanted the foundation to take center stage rather than trying to cover it up with 10,000 other products. If you're interested in knowing what products I've used today, I will link all the products in the description box below and their shades that I've used just in case anybody is interested. Do check the description box out a little bit later on. First thing I'm gonna say is I really, really like this foundation. I like the look of it. I like the sheen on it. I like the naturalness of this product. I like the fact it makes my skin look really fresh and it, it makes it look really, really hydrated. But that's the good things out of the way. The negative things are this definitely needed setting in place. This moves around all over the place and maybe that's because I may have applied slightly too much product and she does say, please don't apply too much product. And maybe I did, maybe I didn't listen to her enough. Anyway, these smile lines here, the product collected in those smile lines and they probably collected in there around about five minutes after I first applied the foundation. So it was while it was drying down, but there is still a slight tackiness on my skin. I don't mind that. I'm used to that with dewy products. I quite like that feeling because my skin feels hydrated. It feels like I've just put a cream on my face and there is still a slight tackiness there. Definitely doesn't feel drying in any way, shape or form. I do have some drier areas around here and it does, it doesn't feel heavy on those areas, but it looks a little bit heavier on those areas. That might change as my natural oils come through, but Again, I definitely had to set this foundation in place, especially in my T-zone area, which is my oilier area. There was no way that this was going to stay in place all day. So thought I'd better let you know about that. The other products blended seamlessly into this foundation. So it's a really lovely base to apply all your other products on. I do quite like the way it looks. I think it looks a little bit heavier than the Dior Forever foundation, which I tried out uh, on Thursday, I believe, of last week. If you haven't seen that video, I will link that up here for you. But I do, I like this. I will say after powdering it down, especially on my T-zone and around this area here, my pores look practically non-existent. But again, I will show you that in natural lighting in just a second. I'm gonna see how this wears throughout the day. I will check in with you as per usual. And I will see you all in just a second. So this is what the foundation looks like in natural lighting. It's just really fresh, really glowy, but not too glowy. It doesn't look oily in any way, but again, I've only just applied it. We're probably an hour into the wear test at the moment. Let me just show you on the side of my nose, which I forgot to powder and I really should have powdered. That was a schoolgirl error. Anyway, it's looking a little bit oily around that area, but again, this is my fault. This is not a transfer resistant formula. It definitely does transfer and it definitely needs setting in place. So I should have done that. It's covered up most of my imperfections, but like I said before, this is not for coverage. This is just to even out the skin tone and then you should apply concealer where you need it. And I chose not to do that today because I'm embracing my imperfections. Go me. Anyway, this looks so nice on my skin. I'm really impressed with it, but again, we're only an hour in, so I will check in with you a little bit later on and show you how I'm getting on. See you all in a bit. Welcome back to the check-in. We are just shy of eight hours since I first applied this foundation to my face. And I thought I'd jump on now and let you know how this foundation is going on because I've had such a busy day today and I'm gonna have quite a busy evening. So I've no idea if I'm gonna get chance to do another update tonight. But if I don't get chance, I will update you in the description box 
how this goes a little bit more long wearing if you're wanting to wear this for well over eight hours i definitely will be wearing this all evening and i will update you in the description box but it has done pretty well like i said before had a really really busy day this is my mother-in-law's 74th birthday today i'm sure she won't mind me telling you how old she is i hope she doesn't because well i just have haven't I? <laughs> anyway, so I took the kids to school this morning. I went and picked the foundation up. I applied the foundation. I have done some editing. I have baked cake for my mother-in-law. I've done some more editing. I've picked the kids up from school. I do walk to school and back and I was a little bit late today. So I've more or less ran to school and then walked back from school with the kids. And now I'm busy making a paella, which is my mother-in-law's favorite so that she can have something nice for a meal later on when she gets back from taking the kids to athletics which she really enjoys to do so it's been a bit of a frantic day I've got to say and the foundations held up really nicely it's not patchy at all there is some that's rubbed off a blemish here but that is the concealer that's rubbed off not really the foundation it's gone a little bit oily on my chin and again around my nose area here it's gone a little bit oily but on my forehead no real oiliness it doesn't look oily it just looks a really nice natural dewy finish this is worn so much better than the wear test that i did last thursday which was the brand new dior forever glow skin i think it was called that did not go this well this is doing really well and i will definitely enjoy wearing this again it has emphasized a little bit of my texture and it does look a little heavy around my dry areas so if you do have a lot of dry areas it may actually be more beneficial for you and i know you're going to be shocked me saying it but maybe more beneficial for you putting it on with a sponge because if you put it on with a sponge you get less product on your face and it won't look as heavy as mine does on this dry area sort of kicking myself for not persevering a little bit more with the sponge i spat my dummy out a little bit earlier on and i'm sorry for that because i think we would have got better on this side if i'd have just persevered with the sponge anyway i didn't so it's done really well i don't think it looks overly oily it's just a really natural sheen dewy finish i had to blot my chin once before I set off to pick the kids up from school earlier on and I haven't repowdered this. Had I repowdered it, I think it would look even better than it does now. This is definitely not transfer proof. This is transferred onto my coat earlier on, which is a little bit annoying. It's also been transferring on my phone when I've had my phone against my ear earlier on. So if you're looking for a transfer resistant foundation, this is definitely not going to be the one for you. And I definitely think it does look better once it's been powdered because if you don't put powder on this, it moves all over the place. So this is definitely one of those foundations that does need to be powdered. If you struggle with that and maybe if it goes cakey for you, if it makes your skin look a little bit crepey, then again, this might not be the foundation for you. But I think it's been quite flattering on my skin all day and I have been really busy and a little stressed, not gonna lie. A little bit stressed anyway i will definitely be wearing this again tomorrow and the day after and the day after i'm going to be wearing it with a primer underneath it i'm also going to be trying it without powder with powder just powder in my oily t-zone and not powder everywhere else and i will update you in the description box which is the best way to wear this foundation so i hope you found this video helpful if you have please do give it a big thumbs up don't forget i'm also on instagram it's at pampered wolf all lowercase no spaces this camera is really really heavy my arm is starting to shake don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already gosh switch hands switch hands there is a watermark in this corner if you click on it it will take you through to my homepage where you can subscribe hope to see you all again soon bye